drifted alarmingly in the bedding was, you know, fancy in the morning it continued to drift. It was laid on the on the exchanges to, to lose. It was something you'd see in a, in a Dick Francis novel, Charles Bones. The ground is soft. It's not. It's oh, not. It's heavy. Soft on time. It's, it's, it's heavy. Okay. And a massive warm welcome to the Bast- very warm uh, Bastards Inquiry Sunday Sermon. And joining me as always are my two favourite cohorts. Uh, it's Chris Law, Malvo and John Lang. Good, Good evening, evening, chaps. Evening. Yeah, and we're to discuss the topics of the of the week uh, that I've got lined up for us and also look at the uh, racing uh, in question over the weekend, including the Hungerford and the Prejax Le Marois that took place today with Franke winning the Philly in spiral. So let, let, let's review the racing job, the main action anyway. There's not a lot to discuss this weekend before, of course, our our favourite meeting of the year, our home meeting. It's a home run this week in your... <laughs> we just we, we, it's like our mecca it's like our journey to mecca it's the best meeting of the year uh, so don't don't forget to miss our show on tuesday it's either um, valhalla, yes the valhalla yes for uh, yeah. what was it for ragnarok yes yes yeah. absolutely valhalla love great show anyway on to the review and yesterday saw uh the main action really at newbury with the hungerford and jeffrey freer uh, so John, if um, uh, we'll look at the uh, Hungerford first. No, in fact, let's let's look at the Jeffrey Freer, Freer and then finish with the Hungerford. The Jeffrey Freer, uh, Zechariah. Now this was an absolute disgrace, John. John, you you you've plenty to say about Holly Doyle, lots to say, and what a disgrace that wifey was basically taking a lead so that so that husband day could win the race <laughs> nice and easy. <laughs> It was very surprising tactics on Outback, shall we say? Hmm. I, I wouldn't say surprising. I'd say that. I'd say uh, uh, as as Holly rung up a, a, a commission agent and says, "Can you get me a few quid on Tom?" Um. I, I mean, I mean, it, it was bizarre. Outbox just bowls along. Given the likely circumstances in the race, Outbox was very easy to back. Yes, nine to two out to, on the exchanges, John. Yeah, big, yeah, big I mean, drink. Normally, you expect them that look like they're going to get an easy lead to shorten up a wee bit just before they off, don't you? And yeah. There was no trace of that. And anybody that was thinking of getting a, a get out in running on outbox would have been shitting themselves when they saw that near the off town. I mean, I, I mean, it's almost as if Tom's promised uh, Ollie a trip to Ann Summers. I mean, I mean, the way that she just gave gave that away. He maybe had promised her a trip to Van Halen. <laughs> On the end of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that was a disgrace, to be honest. Uh, if, if if I was if I owned Outbox, uh, and I put, is, it, is it Hamilton uh, that owned that? Um, yeah. yeah, Hamilton Racing. I'd ask what the f- fucking hell was going on there. I, I mean, I mean. They aren't bothered though, are they? They have her on that fucking Glen Shay that tanks itself into oblivion every fucking time. I mean, yeah. they couldn't care bloody less. Yeah. In 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 retrospect, though, it was it was a it was a fair time. So you know the the I, I can't knock the the winner. The winner's definitely probably run run to a level. It's certainly not looking like a ledger horse, though, is it, John? I give it hundred and five. Yes. <laughs> There's no change from you, is there? It literally, it literally, in oh. yeah, no, nothing, absolute. John's John's very mean on the range. So yeah, but I don't think either of us think uh, Zechariah. Uh, is uh, is ledger, ledger material. So moving on then to the Hungerford and um, Nick Palfrey sets us off by saying, how do I get past Jumby winning the Hungerford? Is there a 10-step plan I could sign up for? Absolutely agree. Um, didn't see that coming, did you? No. And I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of Jumby as well. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't make a case for him yesterday, really. Um I wasn't surprised to see Dubai Poet run well, I must admit. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, Primo Baccio did a Lazarus, came back from the dead. Well, I'm uh, not sure it did, really. I think that holds the form down. Well, possibly. Um, Pogo looked shit beforehand. 
ran pretty shit, but still battled back to get back in front of the Tiber flow. I don't think get seven in the best company. I was, I was very dis. I mean, that was our claxon bet, and I was, I was very disappointed with that. Well, um, I I'd, it wouldn't have won at six. It wouldn't have won any trip. Uh, I, I, I was just disappointed with it. Um, chinned it, you know, basically. Chinned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ant- Anthony Britton really, uh, you know, it, 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 basically, it's the Anthony Britton school there for Richard Annan. Uh, well, it's yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's a it. party, yeah, it's smashing up them gallops <laughs> the way as well. Earn your corn. Yeah, and Wings of War in third as well holds the form down. Um, you know, that's just is what it is. You know, two lengths behind Go Bears Go. You know, it's gr- that looked a Group Three or prior prior to the race. You know, tops. So, so I, I I I struggle to rate Jumbi. I mean, I think you've got to find it under shit Hungerford to be honest. Just a weird Hungerford, yeah. I mean, like I said, Chind, it's not running its race. Tiber Flow's not run anywhere near like it has. Running two tram lines early on, and I probably didn't make a lot of difference. They weren't that far apart, but the three went far side, weren't they? And- yeah. And we had a manky little gap and uh, just piss pot the race, really. Wasn't it? But I'm like you, I've always liked Jumby, but not, I've never saw it in that sort of grade. Um, really, a, a group two horse, but, but fair play. Well done to Connections on that uh, in winning the Hungerford. Okay, so we move on to Sunday because there wasn't a lot happening on Saturday, apart from the bar stewards in decent form, Neverlander with his wank bets, you know, and that te- taught him a lesson, John. That taught him a valuable lesson, didn't it? Going each way on an 11 to 1 chance at Perth uh, that wins and you end up with only half your stake. Well, I just hope it, I just hope it tells him to get a fucking battery in that smoke alarm. <laughs> Listeners, if you want Neville's address, I'll get it, and you can all send him en masse some smoke alarm batteries. How's that? You know, Neville's one of them. He, you know, he's 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 quite shrewd with his with his old caches, Nev. You know, he's one he's one of them. You know, like I said, he 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 he, you know, he, he ties elastic bands around his shoes when you know when he'll be he'll be comes loose, things like that. He's not daft, is Nev. So I just wonder if that's in his thinking. <laughs> Anyway, that's that's something going forward. We'll move on to Sunday, and it it, 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 it was a very good race, really, on paper. The uh, Jacques, Jacques Lemarois, a very fascinating race. It was a um, race on grass. Yeah. yeah. Not on paper. Yeah, race yeah. on grass. Yeah. So, in spiral, managed to come back to form. Not unsurprisingly, as, as we said uh, on Friday's show, and doing the business under Luigi. Interesting, before we talk about that, interesting piece from, uh, was it Muscat uh, in the purse saying Frankie should... Astonishing piece from Muscat, I thought. Yeah. I, 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 I don't, where, where's he coming from with that? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't see his, I don't see his angle about the Tory should, should hang, up his, uh, hang up his boots. Well, I think he should, if that's what he said. If he, if he said he's happy to be taken off Stradivarius because he's feeling the pressure, I mean, what does that say about a supposedly world-class jockey? Could you imagine Piggott ever saying to Vincent O'Brien, oh, I'm getting a bit windy about riding this, you better stick fucking Christy Roach up? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it, it, it is. It's, it, it's so weird. Uh, I, I've never seen like a top class sportsman in any field sort of like make a comment like that that they're feeling the pressure. You know, yeah. the I, I mean, you look at any sport, golf, football, cricket. I mean, wait, well, as happened in cricket, I, uh, Jonathan Trott was a recent example for the I mean, England team. But I mean, it could be Nielsen's full of shit, but you'd expect an immediate denial from Dittari, wouldn't you, if he was? Hmm. Yeah, it's all it's all very bizarre this Tory affair uh, that's that's gone on this summer. But he 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 made he certainly made no no mistake today. It was a good ride. Uh, I thought on the next. winner yes. got got absolutely hundred percent out of those. That that was in spirals. I mean, is that in spirals best or was in spiral below form? I'm going to be devil's advocate. Here. I thought she was better at Ascot. Yeah, I thought that bit of squelch in the ground probably didn't. Help her as much as it might might have done. Um, 
it did help late in the tree, I'm sure. Um, I thought she ran to about 116 today. Fair comment. I find it difficult to rate. The time's good. The time's really good. Um, there's nothing to knock. There's nothing flashy in the sectionals. I've looked on France Gallup for the for the, you know for the individual like there's nothing flashy from anything in terms of well that that was unlucky or that you know no. I think it's solid form. Um, I I think whatever you rate that I think it, yeah or you know order of Australia in fourth. Caribus Caribus though let's discuss Caribus. Um, it's confirming it's a shit guinea, isn't it? It's throwing a bit of a question at the guineas now, but then you say, like, right in the future, it was seventh in the guineas, and managed to finish second in Jack Lamar. Mm. So, you know, that, that's like the other side of the coin, isn't it? You know, I mean, it was such a good guineas, the seventh, managed to chase home in spirit today. Um, but I'd probably take your point. Um, I think Caribus, we could have been one of these, I mean, we did say at the time, He's going to be bang ready, Guinea's there, and absolutely at the peak of his powers. And he's he shown bits and bobs when he was a two-year-old. I mean, there was that day he accelerated. Clay. He's always used a lot of himself, hasn't he? And I mean, he pulled very hard at Ascot. And again, he's using himself up all the time. And I wonder if maybe mentally he's a bit out of tune with the game now compared to how he was at the end of it. You might you might be spot on there. The the reason why I say that is because Caribus they're having to over exaggerate the dropout, aren't they? They come out of the stalls and literally the the rider does not. If you watch the rider, they, they, they do nothing. Yeah, they literally walk out. They have to walk out as if to say that if if we do anything more, as in because there'll be some punters that'll be yeah, upset. You, at that. Yeah, you get the impression if you could so much as change his hands after half a furlong, he'd have jumped into it and. And gone, gone berserk, yeah. Because yeah. clearly they know the horse at home, so they know what they have to do. So that, so if punters are watching that today and thinking, Ooh, that was shit, um, you know, he's, he's, he's done nothing in the, you know, he's, he's got too far behind. And this, I, I just think that's a general thing that they have to do with him to make sure he just doesn't uh, go, go off like a lunatic. That's it, these high metal courts, you know, and when, the, when they have this strong body car, you know, you know and the, the building, you know, the, the, the good makes to be stallion, you know, but I mean, a lot of that testosterone can go the wrong way in as regards when they're racing. You know, I mean, King's Best is really similar. You, you know, I mean, uh, he peaked Guinea's day and then he was out to train. He was starting to go a bit in the nut. I think that's a different, like, Caribus is like mid-race, looking at France Gallup sectionals, was very strong, 10.9, 11.1, 10.9. Uh, 11.33 yeah. and then the final furlong he's gassed he's completely done and I, I, he's, he's obviously a very high quality colt so there's, I'm, I'm not cribbing the horse in terms of what he can do it's just the, what's holding him back is himself as in his nature that he can't I, you know, I, don't, I don't think we'll do it later if uh, if I was driving the bus here what I would do I'd switch him right off I'd hardly do any work with him I'd just noddle him about a bit and I'd have a tilt at the Vernons yeah you know, that's a really good shout uh, it's not a good shout because uh, Rohan uh, was anti-purse advice from Barstrud so it's terrible advice from John there if Charlie Appleby's listening don't listen to John he's an idiot <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I've, apart from that, um, six furlongs is is quite intriguing. Given, well, he's given quick, isn't he? he is quick because ten point nine, eleven point one, ten point nine five. You know, he's he's got that more pizzazz. He, he's more pizzazz than in spiral. He's more. He, he's he's got he's got the turn of pace. And I mean, you, the, you could ride him better over six. I mean, you just drop your hands on the withers and lean forward and just let him roll. Yeah, you know. Um, I don't think they will. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, just going on to um, uh, back to light infantry, John, who you had a little each way dabble on. Um, well, I, I backed that horse at sixty sixes for the SGA pay back in the summer, and Sim Cock didn't run him, um, probably because of the ground. Um, and I thought everything was right for a, a decent performance. And he ran well in France the other day, didn't he, when he came from right back. And then uh, the improved tactics helped no end today. I mean, he was he sat halfway rather than tailed off. 
Be well, hard. good. Um, faster than light has been on. He says, how much improvement has Simcock got out of that horse today? No, uh, in your opinion. Good. Yeah. Yeah, always, like you said, John, always a good horse. Um, it's ridden well. Yeah. And, and I think that's typical with Simcock. I mean, we've said on this show for a long time that we regard Simcock as the best trainer in the land. You know, like, like he's he's not the best trainer in the land, but we regard, he's like one of them up, like time form P's that, yeah. that you, you, that, with, a, with large capital P's. 18% with everything set out there. Yeah. yeah. Jer- Jeremy Gask had to go back to Australia on 2% with everything sat out the back, yeah. which proves that Simcock knows what he's doing. Um, he's but just an idiot. Tactics. But he, yeah, he just apps one dimensional. It's like saying, right, we, we're going to drop this out. Everything is dropped out. Now, whether, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe I'd love it. I'd love to actually chat with him on this. I, w- I would absolutely, if anyone can set this up that listens and can actually get the message to Simcock, and not necessarily on the show if he wants to do it privately, but I would love to know his reasoning for, for doing this because it, 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 you just, you just, you're shafting yourself. I mean, we've even said we, the stats say it: uh, Yarmouth, Ascot, Doncaster, big long straights. What was this today? Big Durval straight course. You know, Simcock's not going to do well on tight turning tracks, held up. I mean, or, or this is what annoys me. I, I, it annoys the hell out of everyone that's trying to back his horses as well, because you you, you look for a well handicapped Simcock horse and it turns up at Wolverhampton, you know, over a mile one and a half furlongs. Uh, and it's and it, and, it, and it's tracking hundred to one perks, <laughs> you know. Well, well, second fab's sort of sat second, and you're thinking, well, <laughs> you're thinking you think squirrel for a super egg, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And then it's fast finishing, and then it comes, it, it you know, really roars home into second. Yeah. And you big think, eye, big eye catcher, racing yeah. close all over it. Next exactly, day. exactly. I mean, you want, want your money back? You're taking five to six at fucking Yama. Yeah, he's, yeah, well, that's it. You know, then he then he turns up at Yarmouth for about one mile three, one mile three and a half or whatever it is. <laughs> you, you know, and they, like you say, and it and it's it's fifteen to eight to eleven to ten in the morning, and then it goes off eight to thirteen, and then lags up. And then, <laughs> it's boring. Everybody's saying what a genius you had from Spencer. Yeah. You know, Simcock, really- you're boring. <laughs> Be less boring. Be interested. <laughs> anyway. Right, we're going to move on from reviews because we've done enough reviews 20 minutes into the show. Um, so, ground at HQ. Um, uh, right, right. I mean, we've talked about it all summer, like we do all the time. Uh, Richmond's mentioned it. You have, John. Prosser, July course. They may as well dig it up, aren't they? I mean, I mean that that was that was the absolute disgrace this week. Uh, I mentioned it to Coos Racing Club as well. I said, look at what he's put on. He's been putting on 20 mils, 20 mil, 20 yeah. mil, 20 mil. And then, and he even, he even topped up eight mils after the Friday. I, we know there's a heat wave. I get that. But look at the times at Newmarket Friday and Saturday. Just look at them. I don't think any horse has got within two seconds of standard. Not within two. Honestly, some have been five, six, seven seconds slow. It's an absolute disgrace. What is it? Is, is the bloke sponsored by Petta? What, what was he doing? In all honesty, it's a pointless exercise betting there or taking heed of the thorn from there, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that part of the season when the switch from the rolling mile to the shithole, it's yeah. just pointless. It's a write off. You know, you, you can't put winners up and say, well, that, that's in pro six or seven pound and give it that as a master rating. Because they'll, they'll go somewhere else and I'm good to serve and run like absolute shit. Yeah, it's like the Eastern Foss Lass, isn't it? it yeah. it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just absolutely appalling. It's small fails, there's no racing line, they're all over the track. It is just a waste of grey matter even trying to fathom it all out and get involved. Indeed. Uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 I just find him, I mean... Andrew Cooper at least had the, the grace to respond to us earlier in the year. He's not got it right since the eclipse, but at least he got it right for the eclipse. Seven point seven. He's not produced seven point seven since as Andrew Cooper at Sandown. But uh, Prosser, you're a disgrace. You're a disgrace, absolutely disgrace to the game. Um, you know how you can produce ground like that 
I know you're not getting any. You're not getting any. You can't blame it that you're not getting any runners because you're too firm because you're producing ground that's slopped up and you're still getting four and five runners runner fields. This disgrace of a clerk should be struck down. Um, that's it. Well, I think the prize money's pretty shit on the sack there as well. Well, it's they've they've halved the Grays race. I mean, I mean, look at the right. The Grays race used to be quite, and the, and the Phillies nursery used to be quite valuable. I'm sure the Phillies nursery used to be forty k. I'm sure the Grays race used to be forty k. Um, they've halved that. I, again, I, I, it, this is obviously you know like we'll, we'll get it onto this. Why later. not scrap the racing and just call it a piss up place? Yeah, it's it's it, it, yeah. It's 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 just not not good. It's not good. These is new market July. It, it needs it needs a it needs a swerve. It needs it's a time form squiggle and a bar steward squiggle. So the double squiggle there for the uh, July course at New Market. We'll move on. Um, more uh, this leads on to our next topics. And John H has been on on YouTube. Real good commenter on YouTube. Thanks, John, for your, all your input on our YouTube channel. Um, it, Check us out on YouTube. There's quite a bit, a bit of discussion on there. Um, and he says, question here, more of a rant. Is anyone looking out for punters? Or is it just a free-for-all out there? Friday, we had the Mullins four-timer bet. Um, all over the racing post all day. The Tremor stewards didn't even inquire to any of it. And that brings me on to um, uh, John Hines, who's also been on and said, is this a witch hunt also? Against say Ronan McNally, who was who was basically persecuted for his gamble, petrol head. Um, you know, he was absolutely ha- you know handed fines. You know, all the, you know brought to task, and and what no even not even in, even inquiry into the uh, into the Ben Irish uh, fair that happened on Friday night where they, they set up four runners um, to um, to do the business. Um, he said, this brings us back to the Jimmy Fox gamble at Kempton. Fox basically admitted some lads in Ireland owned it, but says in the paper, Mrs. Fox owns it. Uh, Kempton Stewart went home instead of asking any questions. Um, you know, it, I mean, this, where is the voice for punters, John, in, in any of this? It's, it literally is just, I see this Irish gamble that took place on Friday night. It's quite funny because the week before, the Irish are moaning they can't run in class five and class six in the UK, right? <laughs> and and I, we, we pointed this out in advance why, but but yet they still moan and think, well, why can't we run in class yeah. five and six? View, views, chaps. Well, it, it's, it's interesting. It goes back to, to a wider point that we've raised before, is that the people are running the game don't understand it. That, no. that, that, that's it in a nutshell. Because if you have people policing uh, the sport and, and the betting, et cetera, in, in the way that they tell us they are, you know, you'd, you'd, they'd be taking a great deal more action pre and post race than they have. But the fact is, either they're under resourced or they don't care or they haven't got the, the right people in charge, you know, it just shows absolute contempt. Not, not suggesting that, you know, any action should have been taken. But they should have had a fucking look, for Christ's sake. You know, it, it, that, that the very unusual betting patterns. Yet we are assured by, you know, by the people that in the integrity unit, oh, yes, we, we monitor it. But, you know, what kind of action has been taken, if anything? And, that, and obviously that, that's, you know, that, that's the, the, the British side. So punters, you know, are, are at the bottom of the list for everything these days. You know, ground, you know, bookmakers, race courses. You know, punters have no say or no stake in the game anymore. And that's the reality. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and we'll bring this up again in another topic in a little while um but john i mean surely here again racing is is classist is it not because um there's no inquiry into the mullins families doing what they're doing but when the kitchen fitter decided to have his day in the sun they brought him to task i think there's always been a, a bit of that about the turf club um if they decide you're on the the hit list. I, I don't think it's necessarily classist because they took Vincent O'Brien out at one point. He got warned off with very flimsy evidence and well, there wasn't really any evidence, to be honest, apart from a, a debatable dope test. And the same as though they have their, their flavour of the month, how they want to get after and how they don't want to get after. Um, when Tartan Bearer ran in the 
I was stabbed, there was probably grounds for a major objection, and I ran wanted to object and got talked out of it. Um, there was very little point objecting, in fact, you know, it was team tactics. Um, well, that was the, that was the failing, you know. Uh, I think it was Johnny Mercer held him in. Going back to the lad's point, I was saying I was looking out for punters. I agree hundred percent with Chris that nobody gives a flying shit about punters that's in a position to do anything about it. I mean, we are trying. I can say that. We we try to highlight Mr. Mainers. We try to highlight Ben Rads, and. Basically, we need a bigger platform. Tell your friends, get the numbers up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that brings us on then to sort of the next talking point, where uh, I don't know if either of you saw it, but Martin Crudus, head of uh, Arena Racing, was yeah. uh, in- interviewed by uh, Matt Chappers um, on the uh, the Racing League program which obviously we, we know that we're not fans of and, and most racing folk aren't fans of. Um, but you mean as well have interviewed the winning post? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, right, so anyway, I'm going to bring on to some comments that Crudus actually said. I, I, first of all, c- can I just say, like, I, I've been in racing a long time, so I, I'm a good character judge. I'd like to think I am. I kind of work people out, you know, how nice they are or whatever. Uh, Crudus, for me, fills the exact exact sort of, like, model of what I'd expect a CEO to act and behave like, um, you know, in that he's, he's acting for his company, which you'd expect, but he's also very slimy, you know, slippery eel. And um, Chapman asked him and said, basically, you know, why... Why can this not be solved? Why, why, you know, why, why are we having too much racing? Why is racing on the downturn? You know, why can't we all get together? And 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 he said, well, it's not that simple. You know, like basically, he's advocating that you know we all want world peace. You know, I mean, what kind? I mean, that tells you straight that that's a red flag. That's like red sirens. You know, achieving parity in racing and making a good racing product for everyone. Is not achieving world peace, is it? No, it does it? It's fucking stupid thing to say. Well, if you've got shares in the IE, you don't want fucking world peace. You want more wars. So that's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, if, if you got somebody more intelligent than Chapman interview him, you'd have said exactly that. Said more wars uh, produce more volatile markets equals more wealth. Um, you know, no one makes money out of sterile markets. Um, no, no. So there we go. So. So, so anyway, going on to further his interview, um, he's saying that this is innovative, um, the racing league, and it, and it's in, and we're all about innovation. Again, this is another example of steering away from the product that has made racing in the the in Great Britain what it is, which is the best in the world. The rest of the world have tried to copy Britain in everything they do. In fact, other countries name name races guineas. Because that's what that because we we did it we 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 do it the best way we 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 have the best best sort of calendar the best the best pattern calendar and other countries that have developed like in Asia etc cetera, etc cetera, Australia they 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 try and expand and try and copy the way we do things and the, the, this is a, 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 for me arc are the evil of the of the entire game because Crudus was cringeworthy in that interview in that obviously he's acting for his company, but he, he doesn't want less racing. You know, he kept saying, well, we might want less racing. We might want more racing. Everyone knows that something needs to change. And the, the, the big biggest problem in the game so far is big corp. Big corp are causing problems. I mean, we, we, we talk about Flutter and Entain, the big, the big corp, the big juggernauts. And these are the ones <coughs> that are... Um, destroying the game by by they're just interested in profit 
profit, 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 massive profits. Not interested in anything else but that. They don't care about the punter. They don't care about racing. They don't care if the game has any long-term benefits as long as they can deliver. A, com- a CEO that's employed by the company just cares about the, his tenure. Has he delivered profit in that tenure? Uh, and good profit? Yes. Big bonuses, sir. And then you can leave. And then ne- let the next CEO get get the flack for doing whatever. Um, dangerous thing, isn't it? It's a rotten thing. Well, we have such an ineffectual CEO at the BHA, it's not going to alter because she's not prepared to take these people on. She, she's wanting to give them all a seat at the table and continue to pull the spot in different directions rather than taking stewardship of the game, which she is a trustee, guardian, whatever, of. She's just wish, this wishy washy approach. I mean, there's no strategy that's talking about getting everybody around the table. This uh, this situation's been brewing for 10 years, and now we're talking about getting people around the table. This game needs smashing up and rebuilding from the grassroots, and she's not the person to do it. And the longer she's in post, the longer this game is in dire, dire danger. Indeed. And, I mean, Chris, I mean, I mean, this, this has got to be worrying that we are... They're heading for a, a a meeting in September. Apparently, all bodies are meeting in September to discuss uh, the state of the game, what can be done to improve it. This is all like, uh, I presume, ARC, but making bodies. I've not heard one punting body mentioned. The, the, the lifeblood of the sport that basically keep the operation going, and we know, we know what owners do. We know what breeders do. Everyone's vital in the cogs. Breeders... You, see, you know, they're on about cutting, say, listed races down. Well, that doesn't help breeders, does it? Because then you don't get breeders' prizes. So breeders get less incentivized uh, to breed horses. So if there's not as much horses, you don't, you can't have as much racing anyway. So, so there's lots of like real difficult issues. The tracks have become greedy on the media rights tit. They don't care about punters. As long as they're getting the the, the funding for, for for showing a race, they don't care. Yeah. Right. So. so Herbism, isn't it? And, and there's so many competing interests, and there has been since the year dot. But you're right, the people that ultimately fund the sport by way of betting revenue are, are marginalised at best, or at worst, don't have a seat at all or a say. And it's it is, you know, it, 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 it's it's crazy. The whole thing is nuts. Uh, and I just don't get it. I think I think just pubs are viewed with disdain by the people in charge. You know, well, a group of people. I was reading the private eye um, on, uh, and, and, it, it, and it was it, it had a topic on betting and the gambling review, and yeah. it was nice to see in mainstream. Well, I'd say it's fairly mainstream, um, yeah. but I, it was nice to see an article uh, in in the private on, affo- on, on affordability. Um, but it, it was it, it was down to the pun- down to the punters not getting on. They actually mentioned. Yeah. A, a good two paragraphs about punters not being able to get on, winners not being able to get on. If you show any sign of winning, you will not be able to get a bet on online. And that's very rarely in the mainstream media. We all about we hear all about gambling harm, yes. but but we don't hear about the other side of the coin where punters are really becoming fodder. And yep. and if we've got no representation when we sit down when we sit down with Ark. When we sit down with with the uh, Entain, Flutter, uh, Racehorse Owners Association, Breeders, we've all got a vested interest. But punters should not be treated as 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 bottom feeder rubbish. That well, we don't care about you. You'll come along anyway because that's where racing will shoot itself in the foot. And in the end, they won't. We won't be coming along because there's no value to be had. And there's nothing. There's nothing to interest us because you've just you've cornered off every single possible way we can have any chance of winning any money. I'll, I'll give you an example of this. Now, if you imagine Julie Harrington running a butcher's shop, right? <laughs> there was, there was <laughs> and the first person to come in is this big, horrible, fat bastard who's parked his Range Rover up on the path outside, and this is Ark, Flutter, NT, and all the rest of it, and he's filling his fucking razor up. <laughs> Butcher does everything bar infilating. Yeah. Carries his box of stuff out for him and pops it in the Range Rover and he pisses off. Then racing blogger and all these piss up merchants come in. They all want a steak. 
<laughs> which is quite happy to accommodate him. You know, stakes sometimes leads to trouble because they all start arguing who gets the biggest steak. But he doesn't <laughs> care because he's selling us your quid's worth. Hmm. Then the little woman comes in that just wants a couple of pound of mints and she's like representing the, the family aspect of it. The butcher's yeah. perfectly happy to have her along. She's no, no good to him whatsoever long term, but she keeps the business ticking over. Meanwhile, out the back of the shop, he opens the back door and he throws the bullock's cock out for the punters. Yeah. There was a dog waiting in the alley. <laughs> That's one of the best analogies I've heard. Uh, absolutely. That was brilliant. Absolutely amazing analogy. Um, that's one of your best. That's absolutely spot on. That is literally it. You've just absolutely nailed it. And that, that that's... Lot... Sorry, Chris. So the problem. I was saying that the, the gambling harm lobby groups are very well organised and very well resourced. And they're very slick and they're very good at getting their message out in the media. There's no equivalent of, from punters, is there? You know, you've got the horse race betters, etc. But but there's no well-organised, well-oiled, well-resourced punting lobby group. And that's the problem. You know, the punters as a group are crap at getting the message out there. And that's why they're continually left behind and not included in the conversation. That's I, think, I think that's it. Like Jeff, Jeff Banks, who, who is not friends, of, of, of certainly certainly enemies of a few people that follow us and, and listen to the show. But he's got a point here when he says that punters don't do enough that they'll comment on social media absolutely right and jeff banks would be someone who would be ideal to get on the horse race betters forum would you not believe he, he would he would he absolutely would yeah. uh, for, for, for all his faults and i don't agree with jeff on a lot of things he's i mean there's a case with adam bunn that i don't agree yeah. with jeff on this i think adam bunn's totally right on this case and that's my view uh, Jeff calls me naive on that, and, and he, but he would do. Jeff has got a lot of good things to say on this, and Jeff is very eloquent, comes across well in his, his, his video messages. He would be perfect to sit at that table. Um, Why well, shouldn't a bookie sit with punters as well? Yeah. Make it joint effort. You know, I mean, Arrington talks about people getting around the table. It's in bookie's interest for the game to flourish on the betting side. Jeff accepts that. Deep down, a lot of the big firms ought to accept it as well. And the punters ought to welcome proper liaison with a, a boatmate. Well, indeed. And and this leads us perfectly into the next topic, where bookmakers' revenues uh, online uh, in this country, anyway, obviously Flutter and NTN have got interests elsewhere, which is helping the share price, um, uh, uh, certainly on the up but in in the uk and ireland their revenue has has has, has not gone well at all um flutters is actually sort of maintained but for example 888 um they've they've reported sort of like quarter quarter down now there's no wonder you know if you if you're if you're asked to, to for affordability checks um you know with with, with punters um this is ine- inevitable absolutely inevitable i mean what, what I don't see the upside of these big corporations, you know, doing taking these measures and and just cutting the cutting their own own business. I I, I, I mean, it's bizarre. It's, we find ourselves in a bizarre situation where hardly accepting it and saying, "Oh yeah, we'll rock along with that." It just saying it's the hate stupidity. Well, obviously, the, the gambling commission aren't helping. Um, that's you know simply. It's cut a long story short, they're, they're, they're funding the gambling harm groups. Um, and so it's like a, a revolving cycle. They find the bookies, they fund the gambling harm groups and they think they're doing a good job. It literally is like that. And and, and then there's less punters and then the game dies. And Well, I couldn't believe this morning. I read that the one thing that that useless sack of shit in Downing Street has pledged to start out before he goes... Is a fucking gambling review. Well, is that what he said? Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, is he, he so? Is is that for punters' benefit or? I just hope he gets stung on the cock by a jellyfish while he's in Greece, to be honest. <laughs> Everyone's not envisaging that, aren't they? Huh? Imagine your visions. You sat, you're listening to this pod, and it's Boris Johnson with a jellyfish. <laughs> right. Sat on the end of it. Sting her out. <laughs> 
Chris, I mean, literally, why aren't the books more vociferous on this? So why is Big Corp not fighting back against these affordability checks? The last thing they want is to lose lose punters, is it not? Well, I think I think uh, I think it's right. It, it is bizarre now whether they think that they can still. Uh, whether they think that there is a sort of a limitless supply of small month punters, which they will, will replace the people who are smarter and have the potential to win money. You know, that could be the only explanation that I can think of as to why they're happy to go along with it. Maybe you think that, that there are enough sort of, you know, once a week month punters having fibers and tenors on that it doesn't matter that they lose higher staking potentially in quote shrewder punters because they can replace them with you know ted monks sitting watching football on a saturday afternoon because you know self-evidently if you look at it just sort of step back there's no rhyme or reason to it but but you know bookmakers aren't foolish you know you know if they if they hadn't got a plan they would almost certainly have stood up to, to governments and, and kicked back the fact that they're happy to go along with it suggests that you know that they're comfortable that they can replace anybody that walks away and i'm mm. I, I don't know because I, I can't fathom it. You know, they're happy to go along and to acquiesce to these ridiculous, you know, requirements and you know, gambling harm and all that rubbish. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, and, and that that word, you know, we talk about gambling harm. I mean, I had a, I had a chat with the producers today, and um, you know, it, it was a good one for a change. And then um, we talked about um, responsible gambling, the responsible gambling message. You know, please gamble responsibly. Now. In that light, saying to someone walking into a boozer, please, please drink responsibly. I mean, it's it's just not going to happen. I mean, what? It's just an idiot statement, is it not? Because the ninety nine percent, or not, I, I don't know. I, maybe that's a, a wrong figure. Let's say ninety percent. The ninety percent that don't have any sort of problem, right? In terms of like how they stake, what they do, what they bet. Why do you need to be told? Please gamble responsibly on every message. Why? Because you, you don't need to be told. And and what? How is that going to stop uh, a gambler with harm that basically has an addiction, a bit like cocaine or or heroin or alcohol? How would that stop any of the? Wouldn't it tell you that it's more likely to needle them? Yeah, but even but John, like I don't even think it's a needle factor. If you've got an addiction, you've got an addiction. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It's nothing's gonna stop you. Nothing. Nothing's gonna stop us now. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, some people will abuse it. Some people, you know, most people will, will bet or take drugs or drink responsibly. You know, that, that, that that's it. You're always going to get a percentage of people, whatever your sort of chosen poison, will abuse it. That's life. It you know, is. It's that's life. You know, banning drugs. How's that getting on? You know, well, the, exactly. Exactly. There's people that's got to have cocaine fixes every weekend. There's people that's got to go out and have 10 pints on yeah. a Saturday and got to do it, you know, yeah. because it, it, it makes the life bearable. Right, that's why they do it. Like, and and so there's people that got to go out there, and and stick and have a five pound lucky fifteen, or op op cops, and then and then then they can, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, you know, order coke and alcohol, <laughs> <laughs> and hookers. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> not to get the hookers, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that's what I'm saying, but they can't afford that on what the that that's that's the thing about gambling. I mean, gambling's always been the the sort of like. I mean, I can remember an old boss of mine working as a uh, for a bookmaker where he set up uh, betting offices on council estates for that reason because that's where that's where the action was. You wasn't going to get much action, you know, in 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 rich areas because everyone saw betting like they still do as as like the uh, the, the devil reincarnated. You don't go in those establishments. Um, so it was on council estates where people went in, had a bet, and hoped to win a few quid to make their miserable life a little bit better. Is that it's right? Game and hookers. Yeah, exactly. That you can't do on a, on a, on, a, on a working wage. So so it, it's it, this this well, is all... gambling idea, which is going to knock the sex trade for this shit as well. Isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to say every, it's a knock on effect because if if people can't. If people can't enjoy the game and and get on and and and, and just 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 bet. 
I mean, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason for all this nonsense. But right. except, except we do accept there are people that do suffer from this and it, it needs to be, we need, we need solutions. Yes, we need solutions. The current solutions aren't going to help because you just, you, you, it's a bit like saying, right, hang on a minute. Uh, there's a lot of plastic mass in the ocean. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to like, we're, we're going to detonate uh, the ocean underneath that will like burn these plastic mass, but it'll take out like three quarters of the fish. Sure. So you get rid of the plastic but you also get rid of three quarters of the fish. You know, it's it, it doesn't make any sense. And but, but people who are affected, the small percentage who are adversely affected by addiction, in this case gambling, are just better at getting the message across. They're better at lobbying. They're better better at communicating their message. You know, and the effect of that is because most punters are selfish. It's a solo game. You know, so that's why it's more difficult for punters to organise as a group because punters, because you know, as in, as racing is, and punting isn't a team sport. But you know, but being um, finding or identifying commonalities with other addicts, it's easy to group up. You know, you find other people who have ruined their lives through gambling, online, whatever, and it, it's more natural for them to group together as a victim group. Punters, you know, don't see themselves as victims. It's a solo enterprise, and it's just you know intrinsically more difficult to get together and, and and you know replicate that lobbying model that the gambling harm people have, have you know achieved that's the problem and you know and, and all you hear is the message in the media of gambling bad because this chap you know ruined his life or his marriage broke or whatever uh, but what you don't hear is the 98 percent or whatever of punters that do so responsibly uh, as a bit of fun and that's the problem. And, you know, and a lot of people in society, unfortunately, as we've seen with COVID and, and all those other things, there are loads of people in this society who are happy to be told what to do. You know, what, and, and, and that mitigates or militates against their ability to stand up and push back against government. People, you know, loads of people like being told what to do. They like being furloughed. They like being told to wear fucking masks, stay at home, do nothing. And that's the problem. And I think it's going to be really difficult to break that mindset to get people, you know, on their feet and protesting against this. Yeah, no, agreed. Positive mention, Kublas, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, not. Kublas, no, no, well, no, no. Friend of the show, can't train a winner. Um, I, I think since Stuart's been on, we've stiffened him. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's how I look. We talk about look, Chris. Yeah. Oh, uh, since oh. Stuart's been on the show... He's a naught from 714 um, since since being on, and he's, he's like he's danced with the devil, and yeah. um, he's, paying, <laughs> he's paying the price. Paul Stuart Williams, pray for Stuart Williams. Come on, Stuart Williams. We need some Williams from Stuart Williams. Um, absolutely. As long as it's not in the Ava. Yeah, as long as yeah, you know when it's going to come. Yeah. Stuart Williams. Stuart Williams will train a winner when you've had your bollocks or absolute bollocks on one. Yeah. And he, yeah. and, he, and he comes flying down the outside at 33s from one mansion and he form all year because he's been, he's been out of form this summer. You know, you know it and I know it. I'll, I'll, be, grit, I'll be gritting my teeth, left hand, congratulating him. They'll be flying in our direction. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I, I know it is. Um, that, that's, that's a premonition. Anyway, Kublers, um, uh, they've got some interesting stats here. Um, the, the, there was one I read about uh, top 20... British tra- uh, British based trainers, John, um, and how it's changed. Uh, in 2001, there was 9,537 in- individual horses that ran. In 2021, it was 9,984, an increase of 4.7%. The top 20 British trainers ran 2,152 horses in 2001, but 3,175 horses in 2021. An increase of 47.5%. The Kublers are saying that it's becoming a super sport. We're going to end up with like super, you know, we've got Colmore, we've got um, uh, Godolphin. We're going to end up like Harry Dunlop's gone, Joe Tweet's gone. More are going to go by the wayside, all these crap trainers. And we're going to end up with like super camps. Is that going to happen? Well, it wouldn't be a bad thing if it did. The the game needs rationalising, doesn't it? Let's let's be fair. Yeah, you know, the the shit race courses that shouldn't be doing business, the shit horses that shouldn't be running, um, and by that rationale, the shit trainers that shouldn't be aching out a living. 
and okay. that's how the game will rationalise because there isn't the owners there at the mid to lower bottom levels to supply these people with, with enough horses to, to make a living. But that that is just going to be fact because of the economic climate. And richer people are going to uh, go gravitate towards these big yards. It, it makes it common sense, you know. I mean, if you can afford to have one with Charlie Appleby, why would you seek out Kobler, for example? Yeah. You know, I mean, tell, tell me why, why I should go to Kobler. I it's true. Sure, I, I, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, it's one of them. If, if you, I'll, I'll just give an example. If, if uh, let's think of, think of a pool of money. Let's say we got ten million quid in bank, right? And yeah. there's ten million quid sat there, and it's all it's all for horse buying and. I'm and this spending other. twenty grand and sending one to Brian Ellison and trousering the rest. No, I'm yeah. sending I'm sending one to Jeff Harker, because cause the thing is with Jeff Harker, right? If you send one to Jeff Harker. I'll guarantee you, it's fucking flying up the gallops, and he'll keep your pecker up even. He <laughs> will, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he's a good lad. Yeah. Yeah, I would say one to Jeff Harker. I mean, Wentworth Falls. He's had he Wentworth Falls with Jeff Harker's. He's he's had that since uh, he bought it from Godolphin, and what a servant it's been. And I mean, like, I admire Jeff because. With what he's got to work with, and he get he gets them to win every year, like his little puller horses, you know, and they'll always pop up. And yeah, that that's who I'd support. I'd I'd, I'd definitely go someone like Jeff Parker just for laugh. But but I know what you're saying, John. In that, like you said, if you've got some, if you buy some serious race, oh, all these mid race mid range trainers that are bleating about this now. If you mention to them voting Labour. The poo poo it because it's yeah. a pure socialism, the politics of envy. Yeah, yeah. Then what would they be all over with this? You know, well, it's, it's the same thing, yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. Socialism, this, this is damn near communism on steroids. Yeah, what they're advocating, you know, why Charlie Appleby's supremely successful, he's done an incredible job at Godolphin. Why penalize him? For being successful and yeah. say we don't only have 80 arses now, Charlie, that will be. Yeah. We're going to set, set, send the rest of the arses to these mediocre fuckers. Uh, same for the you shirt. Owners who can't get into Charlie Appleby's. Yeah, the shirt, so, Ray Ralph. You're narrowing choice, you, you're damaging what ought to be a free market. Yeah, completely. Absolute bollocks. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I, I get it. I, like you say, it's one of them. It's, it's my, he, he, to be honest, it's like my game. Uh, look, I, I, I confess, um, I'm probably one of the the little fish that do this for a living, and and I admit, my my, my year this year hasn't gone that well, and 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 this is the thing that that you you have to you have to face up to time sometimes that that you know, <laughs> like the glory days aren't always going to be there when when you. You, when you're at the head of the game, there are there are better people than me that bet for a living. There are there are better people that um, that train. It's the same thing. You you have to sort of know your limitations and what you can do and what you can achieve. And 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 that's more or less it. Like you said, John. You know, for them moaning and then saying, well, you know, uh, you know, well, you know. I mean, there's a massive pool of trainers at the level of the person in question, Cobblers, right? Yeah. So. If Charlie Appleby gets, I don't know, say 100 horses taken off him with these new draconian measures that they're pre- proposing, if they all get dispersed elsewhere and Cobblers didn't cop for one, what happens then? Does he do yeah. the work again and say, well, that hasn't been done right? It's a ridiculous premise, you, you know. They're a good outfit anyway. They, they're on the up, I think, as trainers. I, to be honest, like, I, and obviously, the, we've, we've had a few sparring sessions and and I've been critical, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't think they're doing a bad job. What they got, you know, I've got to be honest. You know. And I can't see their graph going downwards in any great level over the next two or three years. No, no, no. I think they're going to be all right. Yeah, I, I, that's you know. it. They're not thick. 
I, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. You know, you get trainers that are completely thick, and you know, could be ex jockeys, could be whatever. But you know, mm. some trainers just are just dumb. Yeah. I don't think the Kublers are. I think they're quite intelligent. No. But that don't mean to say you're good trainers. But, but like you said, John, I think they're on the up. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm giving them credit. Yeah, you are. Um, yeah. Mm. You never know. Could, this time next year, it could be friends of the show. Could be. You well, never like, know. Well, I've got me doubts, but... Me too. Anyway, Jimmy Lindley, have you anything, John? No. no. I have. I'm, I'm keeping them all... I'm keeping all mine for uh, Tuesday night. Yes, yes. Choose, yeah. Tuesdays are uh, York preview. Again, I'll mention it again. Don't forget to listen to that. That's going to be big. Me, John, Quentin Franks and Richmond. Uh, going head to head with our best York bets. On to the Jimmy Lindley. It went at Thursk on the 12th of August. A horse called Raid. It's R-E-I-D-H. For those of you uh, searching on the racing post, not, not knowing what the pronounce is. Uh, it was debut for Richard Faye, ridden by Ushin Orr. I like this horse physically a lot. And what's funny is Richard Faye, if you watch Richard Faye in recent times, he... Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, that's so far from the scaffolder. I mean, Richard loves it. But anyway, so <laughs> apart from that, um, <laughs> he loves the game like, like everyone does. Anyway, yeah. um, this horse was interesting because it made 60,000 euros the foal, 145,000 euros the two year old. And um, that's not the interesting bit, although it's it, it's it's interesting because of the physicality. That's why I like it physically. Obviously, it's, it, it looks a looks a beast. Um, but the fact is, in owner Richard Faye's colours. Now, Richard Faye hasn't got the cash to be to be uh, going to Arquana and smashing out one hundred and forty five thousand euros to have one in his name. Um, so whoever owns this wants to be anonymous, which says to me. And I know for a fact that Richard Faye is trained for the Magniers before in terms of an- anonymity. Um, and he's had it in Richard Faye's colours. So, so here we go. So this one, I think, is one to follow. I-, I-, I genuinely think that this horse will be winning a maiden. Absolutely no problem. It was a very slowly run race. Um, it d- obviously didn't suit it. Wasn't that much knocked about. Kept on really nicely. It's more of a banker rather than a Richard Lindley for a maiden. They're not going to fuck around with this. Because they're not. They're not after sixty-five and a handicap. Um, I hope anyway. Um, but I, I don't think so. You don't pay one hundred and forty-five thousand euros for one, you know, and then then try and try and get it get 50, you know sixty or sixty or sixty-five. It's just it's a waste of time. Um, so I just think it's a nice cult. Um, it'll improve a lot, and uh, will be winning. A lot of races, so make sure that's in your trackers because it will do well for you. I'm absolutely certain. Love it physically. Watch it back if you if you get time on the racing post. Um, it, it's a it's a good follower, is this? So that's raid for me. That's all for us. I hope you enjoyed the show. We're back on Tuesday uh, with the York preview. Friday, as always, uh, with the uh, Saturday Ebo show. Uh, there's me, John, and Nick Davis is on for that. Um, he'll be firing uh, for that because he's, he's 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 off for the week, so he'll be blasted. So we hope you have a good week, and uh, don't forget to join us Tuesday. Bye for now. Right, the show's over, boys. Thank you very much.